For most of us, music is not a profession, but a hobby and a creative outlet. In order to make a living, I have a day job. But sometimes when I get home from a long day at the business factory, mired in a haze of bitterness and cynicism, I just want to drink heavily and let the computer make my music for me. Today, I'll show you just how I like to do that. Fortunately, Ableton has tools that are very powerful for creating generative music. My favorite synth, a VST Pigments, also has some very good functions for generative music. And let's be honest here, pretty soon AI is going to be making most of our music anyway, so as a producer it's good to embrace the inevitable and learn to use the generative tools at our disposal. So let's take a look. So to be serious, I do enjoy the process of making generative ambient soundscapes because the tools do help you come up with ideas or sequences that you wouldn't come up with on your own by yourself. And the process of creating generative ambient lets you in a way put aside some aspects of track composition, letting the computer focus on sequencing, for example, while you focus more on um, basically creating a soundscape or focusing on sound design of synth parts and things like that. Also, you can use this as a textural basis for creating a more, say, complete ambient track sometime in the future. So what I'll probably do is just let this run for a while and then pick out the bits and pieces of it I like um, and use that to make an ambient track sometime later on. Or I will probably just use the sounds I designed for this for some other purpose on some other track sometime in the future. So it's a good thing to work on to help keep the creative process going. So I'm going to start with this by creating a, a sonic foundation. And there's um, a lot of different ways to do this. It's kind of up to you. You can use, you know, nature sounds or white noise or, uh, you know, just a drone with a lot of reverb. I'm going to kind of do a mix of a lot of those things. So the first thing I have here is uh, a, basically a samples of uh, traffic that I got from free to use sounds. And this is just running through a lot of reverb. And then on top of that, I have some uh, noise, some noise samples that are generated within pigments. On this track here, and now you don't necessarily need to use pigments to create noise. I mean, there's a lot of synths that have noise sources in them, or you can just use, uh, say, noise samples or noise oscillators within the tools that come with Ableton. Uh, but I like pigments for this because it does have uh, a pretty robust sample engine that has a lot of different, um, see in this noise categories here, it comes with a lot of different types of noise samples that are pretty useful. So there's a lot of, lot to choose from and you can just pick the, the ones that you connect with most that you like. And also, the sample engine in Pigments is a granular synthesis engine, uh, which is really powerful. Um, so I have kind of this running kind of as a granular synth. You see all these little playheads running around. Um, that's kind of uh, moving and being modulated by a lot of different things as we go here. So it keeps the sound like constantly moving and constantly evolving. Um, Maybe isn't necessarily that easy to tell when everything plays on it, but uh, just to hold interest for the listener, it's good to have lots of things being modulated here. Um, the next thing is basically another sound in pigments, which is kind of just a drone that's based around the uh, tonic chord here, which is um, an E minor in this particular case. Um, it's kind of just kind of a generic of. Uh, not too amazing pad sound, but I, I thought it was a nice preset that I found in Pigments hunting through the sounds that I've kind of um, modified pretty heavily <laughs> from this point. And then I have um, a, a lot of different modulation sources running within the preset and uh, running within Ableton to help um, keep the macros evolving as it goes on. Um, then the last thing here is a, it's a bass note that I just made an operator. It's a pretty straightforward FM uh, synth bass sound with a little bit of chorus on it um, that just at random intervals kind of just plays a, an E note.
So just having those things here kind of, um, I mean, you start to see the track building a little bit based on this, just kind of like as a, on its own, it's kind of almost like a, a white noise thing that some people might like to sleep to or something. <laughs> All right, the next big tool in um, Ableton that I've used pretty heavily here is with follow actions. Um, so you can probably tell that in session view here, with each of my tracks, I have a lot of different clips pre-built that um, Ableton is kind of jumping through, jumping from one to another randomly on each track to help keep the sound constantly evolving. Uh, let me turn on another be one or two more tracks here to kind of to give a better sense of how this works. Oops, I need to turn those on. All right, so if we go into the clip view here, um, and then we go to the launch menu in the clip settings, there's an option here called follow action. So you want to turn this on for each of your clips. And then basically what this does is, is it tells Ableton what to do within this track um, once each of these clips finishes playing. So there's a lot of different options here. You can tell it to just play the same clip again. You could tell it to play another one, <laughs> in which case it will just jump to one of the other uh, clips aside from the one that's not playing. Um, you can have next, so you can just keep things stepping in a particular order if you want to. You can jump back to the first or last, or just jump to any other one, ran, you know, randomly. Um, so it gives you a lot of options there. And then in this slider here adjusts the relative probability of these two actions happening. So in this case, it's about a 50-50 chance within this clip of either the clip just plays again or it jumps to a different one. Um, and I have each of the clips in this uh, live set basically built or set up in a similar way. So you can use this, you know, by weighing the probabilities or by, um, you know, adjusting the content of each of these clips. You can kind of weigh the frequency um, and weight the probability of certain sounds happening in a way that's, you know, the way that you want it to sound. So like sometimes I have clips that are just pure silence, so like the sound will stop playing for a while. And others, I have patterns that are, say, um, you know, more busier or, or have more space in them than others. So it just keeps the sound constantly evolving in an interesting way. Um, the other thing that, so that's follow actions. Uh, so the next thing that um, is built within Ableton is the... Uh, random functions. Uh, it's basically a random uh, MIDI uh, MIDI effect. So it adjusts like the MIDI note that comes into it. It adds a, you know random number of intervals to it. And so in this particular track, I have you know a, a MIDI note playing that goes into a drum rack that's randomly changing. So it basically results in kind of a random sample being played of all the samples I picked in this drum rack. Um, then the other thing Ableton has is, uh, you know, a lot of modulators in it. I kind of showed them earlier. Um, these are just like sine wave and triangle wave, but there's also sample and hold, or random, <laughs> in each of these, I guess is what it calls it. So um, you can use, you know, random LFOs modulating things to help keep things interesting um, and help keep the sound evolving in a random way. Uh, on this FX track here, for example, too, I've got an auto pan set up at the end of it with um, kind of a sample and hold LFO uh, modulating the pan settings on it. So that keeps each of these effects, you know, not only a, does a random sound get played every once in a while uh, from this drum rack, but it also gets ran panned to kind of a random place in the stereo field uh, to help make the sounds, uh, you know, help keep some motion going on to the listener. Um, the other thing within clips, uh, 
So Ableton, with Ableton 11, if you go down to, um, I think, yeah, this button down here within your clip view, you have two additional things coming up for uh, velocity and for chance. So the chance is basically the probability that uh, a particular note in this piano roll here gets played. Um, so I guess you, I, the uses for generative music in that case can be, I, I think, probably should be pretty obvious. Um, but the other thing is for velocity, you can use um, th this setting here in velocity range uh, under the notes um, option in clip view to set, say, a random amount, a ra add some randomness to the velocity of each of these notes. Um, so basically you can use, then when, in whatever synth you're using, you can use velocity as a parameter to help keep your, um, modulate your sound in an interesting way. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, just within, able to, a within Ableton itself has a lot of really s interesting and powerful tools to help, um, you know, randomly assign or play notes and just keep sequences evolving in an interesting way. Um, so let's take a look more at pigments and why I like using this for generative music. So you can probably find a lot of tutorials on pigments um, uh, on YouTube. Uh, it's a pretty, it's becoming a pretty popular synth for, I think, for a pretty good reason. Um, not, not only does it have a lot of capabilities in terms of sound design and modulation uh, sources, and you know, you, you can pretty much make any sound you could ever imagine <laughs> in, in pigments, but um, it also has a, a number of other features that I think are really useful for generative uh, ambient. Uh, first is, um, I mean, just a, it has three random modulation sources built into it. Um, and this could either be a Turing, you can either have this be just a sample and hold, so it's basically don't just randomly generating a, a value that you can use to modulate anything in the synth. Um, which is kind of what I've done here. I have like three independent sample and holds running that modulate different parameters on this particular sound. Um, but you can also, if you wanted to, use this as, a, you know, one of these random modulators as a node sequencer. You could set it up as a Turing machine. So you basically have kind of like a randomly created sequence that repeats itself. And then you can take that <laughs> and say, go to this, um, Oops, pressing the wrong buttons there. Um, you can go to your tune settings in this, like in this analog engine here. I have the notes, um, you know, quantized in a certain way. So if you're familiar with modular synthesis at all, this will be, you know, immediately obvious how this works. But um, the way I have this set up is one of these random um, sample and holds is modulating the course pitch on the um, the tune here and then I have that quantized to a certain number of notes in the um, you know within the minor scale that I wanted to play uh, so you don't necessarily need to I guess I could have done that just as easily in a way using the um, Ableton piano rolls and stuff but I, I think it's nice in pigments just to have like all the tools just in one screen so you can have you know pitch quantization and you can have all your modulators for your sound kind of like just self-contained within one VST. Um, yeah, and so each of these three randomizers, each of the three samples and holds are all, they're all completely independent and they're all modulating different things. Uh, the other thing that Pigments has here if I turn my last two sounds on. Is a uh, pretty nice step sequencer. So if my window will open. Um, on this pluck sound here, do you kind of see playing there? Um, that's actually being sequenced by uh, the step sequencer <laughs> here within Ableton. Um, and then you can modulate or randomize, um, you know, pretty much anything here, either pitch velocity, 
uh, octaves, the probability it gets triggered, the length of the note. Um, and then you can also quantize the pitch to, you know, any scale you can, you know, any useful scale or any common scale or mode in the major or minor scales. Or you can also set it up, um, you know, to quantize certain notes that you want to, which I've done within the minor scale here. And you can also set the relative probability of each one happening, um, whether it's high. So like I have the root note at high probability and you know other notes at medium probability and other notes at lower probability. So it helps, um, you know, it's just another tool at your fingertips to help, um, you know, quantize and play sequences in an interesting way. So this is a very brief overview of how I use generative tools in Ableton and Pigments for this project. There's a lot I didn't talk about, such as sound design or arrangement. There's also a few packs with tools for generative music in Ableton Suite that I didn't talk about because I didn't use them at all in this particular project. Uh, these are the Probability Pack, Inspired by Nature, and Creative Extensions. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos about tools for generative music or other content like this. But for now, I'll just let this track play out for a few minutes, and I'll catch you next time.